Welcome coaches, this is Dub Maddox. Thank you for joining me in this introduction to the complete R4 system. What began as a passing system that accelerated coach and quarterback decision making has now been applied to the run game, game planning, and play calling. These first series of modules will be establishing the foundations that will accelerate your game planning process. Like any foundation, we must start with the basics and establish a common language to accelerate our ability to process complex components. We will begin by identifying the non-negotiables that the defense uses to defend space. Module 1 will focus on two key elements, what the offense uses to dictate space and how we define space. Through a better understanding of these terms and the relationships of formations, gaps, and tubes, you will be able to communicate and call out faster where to go with the football. The final tool we will give you in this module is how to use the halo. The Halo infrastructure will provide you with the ability to increase your situational and spatial awareness of the reality of what you're seeing on the field. Let's begin. The following slide represents the many different if statements we as coaches have to process before calling a play. Coverage, front, time, score, injuries, weather, head coach expectations. The list goes on and on. While these factors are many, they tend to pale in comparison to the then decisions we have to make on the play we actually call. As we look below the surface of the waterline, we are actually entering into the coach's mind. And it contains all of the possibilities of plays and schemes we can call on a given down. This scheme information is referred to as explicit information. The better we are as a coach, the more this information we understand. The problem is, is that it takes years to learn and have experience using all of this information. This is the realm that I lived in during my first year as an offensive coordinator. The more plays I had to the myriad of situations I could face, the more security my play sheet gave me on game day. My offensive philosophy was more of a grab bag, shotgun approach. The problem was this. I was good at calling my opening plays, but as the defense made adjustments and the pressure became greater, I found myself getting lost on my play sheet and locking up in key situations. I simply couldn't filter all of the information in my head. My play calling process was broken. What I thought was broken was that I was trying to do too much. Too many plays, too many if thens. So the next year I decided to try another process. The other side to the all knowing explicit play calling approach is using an implicit method. Implicit means simple and understood. This play calling approach is accomplished by having a limited number of schemes that are packaged together. Coaches make better decisions because there are fewer options through plays that attack a specific defensive reaction. Most of the prolific offenses in the game follow this model. Oregon's explosive offense is a prime example. By using a few formations and personnel groups, plays are organized through a decision making process that constrains the defense. As we went to more of an implicit approach, we had more success. The problem we discovered was that it didn't give us all of the answers to the coaching and player personnel variety that we had year in and year out. For example, we didn't have a Marcus Mariota or the high school equivalent. I wasn't Chip Kelly, nor did I have a staff like his that had run his style of offense for many years. Not being able to recruit and having years of experience coaching that specific system was crippling. It put me in key situations in critical games where I didn't have the answers to a defensive adjustment or didn't have the players to drive it. My play calling process was still broken. What I found myself in was what I call the coaching crazy cycle. It's the jumping back and forth from an explicit multiple offensive system to an implicit prepackaged one. How do we get the explicit benefits of understanding all of the information in the game of football along with the accelerated decision making benefits of the implicit system? The challenge is that it takes years learning from the best football minds along with game day experience to master this ability. The timeline in the coaching profession is not that patient and there are no guarantees. What if it was possible to get you to understand all of the relationships in the game of football? What if we could provide a process that would allow you to clearly see and communicate what the defense is doing and immediately know what scheme or adjustment is needed to attack it? What if you had a common language that your coaches and players could use to easily describe the success or failure of a play? What if we could eliminate five to ten bad play calls a game? What if you could reduce hours reviewing films, scripting plays, and developing a game plan? What if you could play the game before it's been played? What if your offense had the versatility to run a complex, explicit system with the simplicity of an implicit system no matter what your personnel? What if you could accelerate your coaching career five to ten years? 
It may seem that you can't have all of these benefits when in fact the science behind rapid cognition says you can. Rapid cognition is thinking without thinking. It's what the best play callers have the ability to do. It's the ability to control the chaos and eliminate the clutter by knowing the answers through asking the right questions. The complete R4 system is rooted in the science of rapid cognition. Accelerated decision making can be achieved consistently under pressure when three elements are present. Number one, we have to identify the non-negotiables, what matters most. Number two, we need a decision making process that is consistent no matter what the concept. And number three, our process must be turnkey repetitive through a common language. This allows the operator to easily teach it to others. This is how we developed the R4 passing system for quarterbacks and continued on to build the complete R4 system. Now it's your turn to get the same competitive advantage for your entire offense. So let's begin with the non-negotiables. The non-negotiable of defense is to cover space, or in R4 terms, to cap space. The non-negotiable for offense is to create space, or in R4 terms, to uncap space. As we take a closer look to the number one non-negotiable of defense, we find that the space they want to eliminate is specific. The defense wants to cap run and route space. In knowing that, we need to ask the question, what dictates space? Run and route space is dictated by formations. Formational run space is located in the area called the box, and then branches out to different areas of route space outside the box. Traditional teaching methods break up route space into 11 different areas based on location. Here are some of the key points in understanding space availability. The run box is the highest priority of space threat to defend. This is because running the ball into open space is the easiest way to move the ball for the offense. The box is the boundary that separates the run and route space. This is an important frame of reference to determine where space advantage is located. Run space is formed in gaps inside the box. Route space is formed in tubes outside the box. The box is formed by the number of gaps in the formation. A coach's highest need is to understand all of the information and knowledge in the game of football with the ability to recall, apply, and execute it under pressure in a fast and simple way. He then needs a common language that he can use to teach this same process to his staff and players. In order to achieve this ability, we need a bridge that connects and pipelines the explicit information into an implicit action. We call this process the B4 bridge. B4 stands for box, bubble, best, and build. The bridge provides the decision-making pillars that accelerate our game planning ability. The first component of the B4 game planning bridge is evaluating the box and understanding what it tells us. The box is dictated by the formation which contains gaps of run space. Let's review some basics to begin the B4 process. The offensive formation dictates the number of gaps to defend. A gap is created by the space between two down linemen. Gaps are labeled with letters starting with A's between the center and guard and work out to B, C, D, and E gap from there. Bringing a player within two yards of a down lineman creates an additional gap. Formations will present anywhere from six to ten gaps of space. Run space is formed by gaps in the box. The next area of space that a defense must defend is route space outside the box. Route space is located in tubes. Formations dictate the number of tubes that can be immediately attacked by the offense. The offensive formation dictates the number of tubes to defend. A vertical tube is created by the number of eligible wide receivers that can be released on a given play. There are five vertical tubes in football due to the rule that up to five wide receivers can be released downfield on a pass play. A horizontal flat tube is created on each side of the formation outside the run box. Route space is formed in tubes outside the run box. Now that we have covered how formations dictate run and route space that is presented to the defense, we need a deeper understanding of how to locate the position of defenders to understand the space they intend to cap. Now we must ask the question, how can we better define space? 
Traditional football teaching loosely defines space, but without clear frames of reference, one coach's definition of space may differ from the other. In the absence of a clear communication, who is right? And how can we know where the run space ends and route space begins? How can we clearly communicate positions of defenders and the space they intend to cover without clear boundaries? This predicament was solved for us by creating the HALO. HALO is an acronym tool that provides specific frames of reference for any formation to define run and route space. The H in HALO stands for hard deck. The hard deck defines vertical route space. The hard deck is the boundary between vertical space from run box and flat space. The hard deck is a horizontal line that can range from 7 to 10 yards from the line of scrimmage based on the personnel of the wide receivers versus the defensive backs. Once the hard deck is established, the vertical space is divided into five tubes above it. The A in HALO stands for apex. Apex is the boundary line between the run box space from flat space. The apex line is the midpoint between the end man of the line of scrimmage and the first eligible wide receiver. The apex line is two yards outside the end man of the line of scrimmage if no wide receiver is outside of him. The L in HALO stands for center line. The emphasis on this line is critical because it defines the number of defenders to a side of a formation. This line also provides a boundary that divides the formation and run box in half. This line runs through the center. The O in HALO stands for outside space. The outside defines flat space. The outside space is very important to highlight because it is spaced as a mixture of both run space and route space properties. For example, receivers that are located outside the apex line create an immediate space threat for the defense to defend. If the outside space is void of a defender for each wide receiver, then the offense can immediately attack this uncapped space with now screens, bubble screens, jet sweeps, etc. Once the halo has been overlaid onto the formation, run space in the box and route space in the tubes can clearly be defined for the offense. And with a clear definition, we can better communicate and understand of the intent of space that the defense is in position to cap. The first non-negotiable of defense, as well as their highest priority, is to eliminate immediate run and route space threats. Open run space is the easiest way to move the ball. This is why we use the box as the first segment of the B4 game planning bridge. The box and how the defense chooses to defend it is the starting point in any game plan. So it is imperative that offensive coaches understand the spaces formations present to the defense. Formations dictate run and route space, but the halo defines it. The clear frames of reference that the halo provides gives the coach and his players the competitive advantage that they need to see space opportunity in a whole new way. In the next module, we will use the halo to reveal the four spaces of opportunity that are available on any down, using any formation, against any defense. Then we will show you how to apply the halo in a game planning of an opponent through scout film. See you there.